Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you to please join us as we honor America and those who protect it. Please rise for the singing of our national anthem. Tonight's anthem is being performed by Gabriela Valdez. Sun Dome on the campus of the University of South Florida in Tampa for women's college basketball on the American Digital Network. Tonight, the USF Bulls host the Cincinnati Bearcats. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ted Sarandis, joined by Jeff Sharon. USF checks in at number 20 in the nation. They are 17-3 and three overall, 6-1 and one in the American. Cincinnati is 14-7 and seven overall, 5-3 and three in conference for usf they're coming off a big win at temple on sunday afternoon and cincinnati lost a tough one in overtime last time to tulane jeff let's get your thoughts on anna owens of cincinnati she has really been their best all-around player to this point in time yeah that's Ed, and she's really stepped up her game for the bearcats the junior from indianapolis was last year's top score she's down to second on the team with the emergence of Shanice Johnson, but sixth in the conference in assist against Tulane last Saturday, 15 points, six rebounds, and four assists. And uh, her, her head coach, Coach Elliott, says she gets better every day because she no longer has to do everything. For USF, sophomore wing Katia Laksa, averaging nearly 20 points per game, and she can really shoot the basketball, Jeff. Boy, has she emerged this year, what, in her sophomore year? Such a good shooter all the way around. She's second in the conference and scoring at just under 20 points a game. Uh, but in terms of her three-point shooting, she's really been fantastic. Just a shade under 40%, Ted. And she is going to be the straw that stirs the drink for the USF Bulls tonight if they're going to get the victory on the home floor against the Cincinnati Bearcats. It's USF and Cincinnati here at the Sun Dome, and we're back with the starting lineups in just a moment. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. For every hero, there is an origin story, an experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling, offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. The University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. are America, the conference of opportunity, the opportunity to chase dreams, the opportunity to make your mark and change the game, because that's power. We are power. Here 
here at the Sun Dome, Ted Sarandis alongside Jeff Sharon as we get set for American Athletic Conference women's basketball. It's Cincinnati and USF. And Jeff Sharon, let's get your keys to the game tonight well, for both teams. Well, for the visiting Bearcats, they got to stop the bleeding. They've lost their last two coming in, and they've collapsed in the fourth quarter both times against UCF and Tulane. they got to be smart with the ball, too. They're third in the American in turnover margin. USF is eighth in turnover margin. Got to turn the ball over to beat the Bulls. Four said Bulls. They got to hit the boards. They lead the American in rebounding. They're 15th in the NCAA in that category. Cincinnati's eighth in the conference. And then they got to hold the lead. They nearly blew a 16-point fourth quarter lead their last time out against Temple. They're in need of some home cooking right now. All right, Jeff, starting lineups for the Bearcats of the University of Cincinnati. They'll go with Shanice Johnson. Chelsea Warren up front, and then the three guards. Anna Owens, the point guard who makes things go. Bianca Quisenberry and Brandy Tarver. And the head coach of the Cincinnati Bearcats in her eighth season is Jamel Elliott. For the USF Bulls, they will go with their usual group of Maria Jesperson and Tamara Henshaw at the forwards. Of course, Kitty Alaxa, so good on the wing, will shoot it. And Ariada Pujol and Leia Flores in the backcourt. And the head coach is Jose Fernandez in his 17th season coaching the Bulls. And it's Cincinnati winning the tip. Step back pop is too strong. And Flores grabs the rebound. Both teams opening up in man-to-man. Pujol looking to make a play. Here's yes person. Janice Johnson clears the rebound. Tradition that started, as far as I can tell, at Syracuse University. The fans stand here until the home team scores first. Shot clock at 15. Cincinnati very deliberate. Good defense there by USF, and here comes Flores. And so far, we've seen outside looks from both squads. Nothing inside just yet. Let's see if the Bulls can pound one inside here to try and loosen up that Cincinnati defense. Loxa, it's where they want the basketball. Now, yes, person. Good switch that time, and they stole it away. Excellent hands there. Quisenberry with the steal. Johnson out deep. And Cincinnati will get it back. Now, don't let that fool you. Shanice can actually hit that outside shot, but she didn't quite step into it that time. And Cincinnati gets the ball back here at the full shot clock. You're right, Jeff. She shoots it at nearly 42% from three. This is Anna Owens on the ball. Where's number three? She's the point guard. It's where the Cincinnati offense starts. Long three-pointer. And a dead ball rebound, it'll be USF ball. As for Cincinnati, it was Bianca Quisenberry unable to get her first shot going. Now she's been a key, the senior this year for Cincinnati in terms of the outside shot. If she can knock them down, she can get hot pretty quickly, 32% from beyond the arc. Both teams like to run, but the pace has been very deliberate here in the early going of the ball game. Which to me favors Cincinnati. That's what they want to do, slow the, bull, slow the Bulls down. No question. Yes, person. A Pujo in the lane and hits. Gorgeous dream shake that time. Put the move on Johnson, and that's the first basket of the game. 2 nothing for the Bulls, thanks to Ariadna Pujo. Now Owens to the goal. This is Johnson for three. And hit. Now we just talked about that, right? 42% from the arc. Well, she's just bumped up her average. Is one for two from out there. That brings Jose Fernandez up off the USF bench. Who's hold to the goal? So a little inside-outside work for Ariadna, the senior from Mataro, Spain. Owens hits the quick jumper on the other end. And now we're seeing the pace pick up, and this favors USF. Back the other way. Flores on the attack. Maya Flores. Native of Mataro, Spain. As is her running mate, Ariadna Pujo. Now Pujo finds Jesperson. Almost a tie up there. Do they get it? No. But they get a turnover. 
And the first substitution of the game comes early. Sam Rogers is in the game. Where's number 11? Let's take a look right here once again at Pujol. You see that dream shake. Hakeem Olajuwon patented that, and she stole it from a nice little job right there. And USF still down one here since he with the ball. Owens now for Sam Rogers. Rogers missed 11 games because of a MCL injury. Stolen right back a by Johnson. steal by Johnson. Wow. And gives the visitors a three-point lead. There you see the quickness and the physical presence of Johnson on defense causing havoc. Look like USF had the turnover, but then Shanice is able to take care of business. Flores looking to make a play. Nifty dribble. Nice feed underneath. Henshaw lays it in off the terrific feed from Laya Flores. And no surprise for Laya. You know, she leads the team in assists with 128, one of the nation's leaders in assists. Owens the other way, able to draw the foul off dribble penetration. And that foul looks like it's going to be on Pujol. First personal. First on the team. It'll send Anna Owens to the line. Owens outstanding at the stripe. Nearly 84% for the 5'5 junior from Lawrence North High School, Indianapolis, Indiana. Averages nearly 13 points. 88 assists. 70 turnovers for the junior point guard. And head coach Jamel Elliott told us that, you know, she was last year's leading scorer for the Bearcats with the emergence of Shanice Johnson. That's taken a lot of the load off of her this year. She said, you know, she gets better every day. She no longer has to do everything. And that's opened up her game this season so far. And we've seen her really blossom as a facilitator of this Cincinnati offense. Cincinnati substitution. Angel Riser in the game wears number four. A six-foot freshman forward from East Wake High School in Zebulon, North Carolina. 4.1 points and nearly four rebounds. Second free throw is good, and the visitors have a three-point lead. Yeah, we're seeing really good defense on the back end for Cincinnati. Obviously, Johnson, but when you can switch out Warren for Riser, you're not losing much. Henshaw with the finish off the feed from Flores. Henshaw was the freshman of the week in the American back to start the new year, January 2nd. Good inside player, and you're show, showing her moves right there as well. Rogers' shot won't go. A deep rebound battled for, and Pujo comes away with it. Now locks it for three. Can't get the roll. Henshaw clears the rebound. And an offensive board for USF and Henshaw. There we talked about her presence inside. That's going to be key with all these outside shooters. Yes, person. For Flores. Nice feed underneath. Pujol draws the foul on the interior. Now, Ted, we're seeing in the early going how quickly USF is starting to move the ball. It feels like they broke the ice after those first three possessions where things went very slowly, and now they're picking it up. Here's a good example of this right here. Look at the quick European offense that they like to run with Coach Fernandez. And that gets them an easy basket inside. Free throw Pujol is good. That was a nice quick hitter. On the interior to Henshaw. The foul on Sam Rogers for Cincinnati. First personal. First on the team. A pair of free throws for Ariadna. And the home team up by one at 10 to 9. As we approach five minutes remaining here in this first half. Johnson the step back. Henshaw clears the rebound. And I'm watching this matchup with Henshaw against Johnson on the interior. Pujol out deep Flores. And now Cincinnati switches, and Johnson's out on the perimeter. That helps USF a little bit here. Locks it for three. In and out. Here's Angel Riser tracking down the loose ball. Down court, this is Owens. USF sticking to man. Johnson will take the long three. Good hustle there by Riser to grab the offensive glass, and Cincinnati will reset. Yeah, she's going to have to do that with Johnson on the outside. That takes away some rebounding help. So that's a nice play by Johnson, getting them an extra possession. Owens, back out deep, Quisenberry. The Esperson clears the defensive glass. The Esperson all the way to the goal. Henshaw with the follow. Good play on the interior to draw the foul in the offensive rebounding action. Now we talked about how USF is a really good defensive te or defensive rebounding team in particular. Third in the conference in rebounding defense this year. 
It's USF by one. You're watching women's basketball on the American Digital Network. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. The American Athletic Conference Championship is right around the corner, taking place March 9th through the 12th at the Excel Center in Hartford, Connecticut, as all 11 American teams will compete for the automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. Tickets are priced as low as $199. Get yours today online by visiting www.excelcenter.com in person at the Excel Center box office or by telephone at 877-522-8499. We look forward to seeing you in March. The University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. For every hero, there is an origin story. An experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling. Offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience as the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. It's USF 10, Cincinnati 9, with four minutes, two seconds to play in this first quarter. Ted Sarandis alongside Jeff Sharon. We're at the Sun Dome on the campus of the University of South Florida here in Tampa. Jeff, USF shooting four of eight from the floor and doing it on the defensive end, holding the visitors to just three out of 11, and yet Cincinnati trails by just one. Yeah, but here's the thing is that Cincinnati right now is playing USF's game. They've got, they've actually shot six three-pointers in this game so far, and we've seen Shanice Johnson take three of those, and she's only taken on the season 36 for the year, and that's not good for Cincinnati because they need her inside presence if they want to slow down the pace of this game. And the Bulls have held Cincinnati scoreless for better than two minutes. And looking to add to that defensive presence, and they do. Flores on the attack for the Bulls. Now Pujo. Ariadna will back it out. Cincinnati stays man for man. Both these clubs committed to playing man defense. Now Flores off the dribble. For Jesperson, she'll attack the goal. And she'll draw a foul off the bounce. And the foul will go against Sam Rogers, second personal, third on the team, and the other key game in the American Athletic Conference tonight, UConn, has a 12-5 lead at Temple in Philadelphia. We'll keep an eye on that one for you. That's a Temple team that showed themselves well last weekend, as here's Owens. Again, defense coming up big for the USF Bulls. And it's leading to the transition. Here they come again. Flores can't get it to drop, and the rebound there for Chelsea Warren of Cincinnati. And Owens always involved. Where's number three for Cincinnati? This is Bianca Quisenberry out deep. Where's number 22? This is what Cincinnati wants to do. Stay in the half court. Owens with the shot clock under 10. She'll have to make a play off the bounce. Instead, the steal there by Flores. Second on the team in that category. Jesperson for three. She hits. Jesperson hits a three from out deep. And USF extends to their biggest lead of the night. It's a 15-9 advantage with 2.25 to play in the first. Well, we talked about how good Kitty Aloxa is from outside. So far, she's been pretty quiet, but her teammates have been picking her up. Quisenberry hits on the other end. Bianca Quisenberry. 
A 5'6 senior from Springfield, Ohio. No relation to former Kansas City Royals closer Dan Quisenberry from the mid-1980s. Jesperson the other way hits from three. Maria Jesperson bangs in another one. And the Bulls up by seven. Now Maria last year averaged just under six points per game. She's one of the players who have really stepped up this year for the Bulls. Six points for Jesperson, both of them threes. Quisenberry looking to make a play for the Bearcats. Now Owens with the shot clock at 10. Off balance. USF controlling the defensive board. Here's Pujol with some nifty ball handling skills. Now Flores. A reach-in foul on Cincinnati, and that's the fourth team foul on the Bearcats. And that's the tough situation there, Ted, for Anna Owens, is that she's a little bit undersized, and we saw how Flores has that little extra step on her, and that's what drew the foul out on the perimeter. The foul on Anna Owens, and again, the team fouls 4-1, to one, Cincinnati 4, USF just won, with 121 to play in the quarter. Had a fresh 30 for the USF Bulls. Jesperson to inbound for Laxa. Now Flores. Now they're trying to run screens for Laxa, but they have to go the other way with it. Pujol and the steal there by Shanice Johnson. Excellent defense, Shanice Johnson. She can fill up the stat sheet. Leads the team in that category, along with points, rebounds. Quisenberry on the attack. Again, USF controls the defensive glass. And they're letting him play on the interior, too. Good hustle there by Durant Naj, who just checked in. Where's 13? Now Flores from out deep. Johnson clears the rebound. So amazed at how cleanly UCF, or excuse me, USF passes the ball back and forth to set up the open shot. Nakira Goings just checked in, and she knocks home the baseline jumper. Less than 30 seconds to play in the quarter. The shot clock is off, and USF has a five-point lead. Pujol, now for Laxa. Laxa stops. Good defense there, Quisenberry. Whole quarter, she's been all over her. Pujol, all the way, draws the foul. So dribble penetration has really been... A benefit for the USF Bulls here in this first quarter. And that's been a function of Cincinnati's defense as well. Coach Elliott told me yesterday when we talked on the phone that what you have to do is try and keep Loxa contained, and that means you got to get other people involved on the other side of the floor. And so far, Pujol's been outstanding for USF in this game. Jesperson has also got a couple opportunities. That is a good sign for the Bulls at this point. Five team fouls on Cincinnati. And Quisenberry goes to the bench with 6.4 seconds left to sort of give her a little bit of an extended rest as she deals with Loxa at this point. Officials trying to track who committed the personal foul. Also need to correct the scoreboard. Yeah, the, the scoreboard above us in the middle of the dome says 18-14. The one over in the ones over in the corner say 19-13. Here comes Cincinnati. Three, two, one. Does she get it off? She does, and that's the end of the first quarter. Our score at the end of quarter number one is USF 19 and Cincinnati 13. We're back with the second quarter in just a moment. Stay with us. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship tickets are now on sale for March 3rd through the 7th at Mohegan Sun Arena. Get your tickets today to watch all 11 teams in action fighting for an automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. 
Tickets start as low as $99 and can be purchased online at mohegansun.com, on Ticketmaster, or by calling 1-800-743-3000. Let the games begin. We'll see you in March. We are American. We are the spark that ignites. Dazzling. Brilliant. Intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. The American Athletic Conference Championship is right around the corner, taking place March 9th through the 12th at the Excel Center in Hartford, Connecticut as all 11 American teams will compete for the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Tickets are priced as low as $199. Get yours today online by visiting www.excelcenter.com in person at the Excel Center box office or by telephone at 877-522-8499. We look forward to seeing you in March. End of one quarter, it's USF 19 and Cincinnati 13. Ted Sarandos alongside Jeff Sharon. We're at the Sun Dome on the campus of the University of South Florida in Tampa. Jeff, USF finally warmed up, and they did it with dribble penetration. Six out of 12 from the floor for 50% in that first quarter, and uh, they scored eight points in the paint and really controlled the boards, particularly the defensive board, out-rebounding Cincinnati 13-7. to and holding the visiting Bearcats to just 5 of 18 from the floor, under 28%. Yeah, the interesting part about that, Ted, is the fact that Kitty Aloxa is scoreless in this game so far. 0 for 2 from the field. Her teammates have picked her up. Jesperson Henshaw and Pujol leading the, right now leading the team. They're the only three players who have scored for this relatively limited USF rotation. No, it's, it's really on target, Jeff, that uh, USF would play such a strong defensive quarter do a really good job on the boards, have a six-point lead after the quarter, and their best player, Laxa, is scoreless. So that, frankly, bodes very well for USF. But Cincinnati has also guarded Laxa. Give credit. They've guarded her extremely well to this point with Bianca Quisenberry. Let's see how that continues. Laxa pulls up, and she draws a foul. Well, that time she was being guarded by Brandy Tarver, who actually started out the game uh, off the opening tip guarding her, and then they switched and put Quisenberry on. So trying to force a couple of different looks, but Lox is going to get a couple shots at the line. In Philadelphia, UConn off to another scorching start. End of the first, they lead Temple 25-8 to eight as the Huskies continue their otherworldly play in women's college basketball, looking for 96 in a row. And you don't see Loxa miss too often at the free throw line. She's almost 89%, and she makes that one. And you see her shaking her head as she's running back the other way. One out of two is not good enough for her when you're shooting almost 90% from the line. Let's see how Cincinnati opens this quarter. with On the interior, Warren able to score. Warren, the 5'10 sophomore forward from Red Oak High School, Red Oak, Texas, averages five points, nearly five rebounds. And 57% from the field because she's able to get good looks on the interior. Loxa can't get that one to drop, but again, a good job grabbing the backboards. That's Henshaw with the rebound, grabbing the board there. Now, Henshaw has really been a pleasant surprise for the Bulls. 6'1 freshman out of Palm Coast. She's the only player from the state of Florida on the USF roster, interestingly enough. Team leader in blocks, as you see. As we come back to action, as Loxa gets that going on Loxa the Loxa hits side. her first jumper. And she's got three points, and USF has a seven-point lead. They're so quick in pounding the ball, they skipped right past our replay. Traveling violation on Shanice Johnson. And they force a Cincinnati turnover. So we have 8.54 to play here in the second. And USF leads Cincinnati 22-15 in the... Bearcats have got to be a little bit frustrated, Jeff, because they've played really good defense, and one of the best players in women's college basketball is Jesperson hit a wet spot and fell down, and it's a turnover, and yet they're down seven 
and they've held Loxa to just three points in this game. Yeah, but it's a credit to USF's defense in particular. We talked about how good they are at field goal percentage defense. These are the number three and four, USF and Cincinnati respectively, field goal percentage defense leaders in the conference. USF holding opponents to just 36% for the season. Right now, Cincinnati shooting 31%. There's no question. As good as USF uh, has, as good as Cincinnati has played defensively, USF has been better, and they've dominated the defensive glass. Here's Flores. What a play by Loxa to catch oh, that was. ball that was going out of bounds. She pulls up. Can't get it to drop, but Shanice Johnson clears the board. Don Cordano Owen. Nice feed on the interior. Gorgeous. Score it. Angel Rizor with the lay-in. Well, that's classic Anna Owens taking it to the basket. Pujo called the for traveling. She thinks she got pushed on that play. Substitution, Bianca Quisenberry back in the game. Yeah, we've seen USF. It's pretty amazing that they're only up five right now. Coach Fernandez you know, kind of biting his nails a little bit. I would be too when you're shooting 50%. Your opponent's shooting 31 right now, and you're only up five, and Cincinnati has the ball again. Quisenberry on the ball for Cincinnati. Get it in for Shanice Johnson. It's where they want the ball. Now the step back. Riser can't get it to drop. And USF with the big defensive rebound. Loxa pulls up. Excuse me, Jesperson. Yeah, she hasn't been afraid either with, with how USF's been shooting on the wing. And it looks like the Bulls are in a little bit of a... No, they're going to stick to man-to-man. -man. They were switching. They switched nicely, though, and they get the offensive foul. And Loxa on the bench for USF. Bianca Quisenberry called for the charging foul. Cincinnati right now 7 of 22 from the field. USF 7 of 16. So Cincinnati's gotten their opportunities in this game, Ted, but they haven't been able to make it happen. Pujol draws oh, a goodness. foul on the interior, and Johnson goes hard to the floor. Boy, Shanice went up and went up for the block, and she came down hard on her right side, it looks like. I believe her right elbow or forearm. She's taking it off. Looks like it must have been on the funny bone. That's her second personal foul, fourth on the team, and here it is again. You know, if you played college ball, high school, or even in the playground, that's happened to all of us at some point or another. Looks like she's shaking it off. She'll be fine. And yet it appears she's going to come out. A substitution set to check in. Maya Benham, version number 20, a 5'10 sophomore from Osborne High School, Douglasville, Georgia, averages 2.2 points, 1.2 rebounds. Benham, a high school teammate of Goings on the same roster. A technical foul on Cincinnati head coach Jamel Elliott. Apparently got in the official's ear as the huddle closed, and we were screened from that contact. So Jesperson misses the first one. And Jesperson excellent at the line. She's almost 81%. Maria will go again. Makes that one. So they're seven of nine from the stripe. Cincinnati two of two. These are again two of the four best free throw shooting teams in the conference. USF second at 76% as a team. Cincinnati fourth at 73. And here's Ariadna Pujol at the line, the 6'1 senior forward from Mataro, Spain. Averages 13.5 points, six and a half rebounds. Ariadna again, can't get that one to drop. And the rebound there grabbed by Maya Benham of Cincinnati. Here comes Quisenberry for the Bearcats. Quisenberry has done a nice job on Katia Laksa, who's on the bench right now, getting a rest. Step back top, Benham is an air ball, and she'll hear that call from the USF fans. 
Yeah, Benham this year, that's not her shot. Even though she's three of six from three-point range, 50%, that's not what you want to do uh, with that possession if you're Jamel Elliott. Hannah Owens back in the game. Number three replaces number two, Nika Goings, for Cincinnati. Jesperson for Naj, where's 13? Now Pujo. Guarded there closely by Benham. Pujol off the glass gets the roll. Gorgeous take by Ariadna Pujol. The senior from Spain shooting 46% on the year coming in. Nine points for Pujol. A nine-point lead for USF is their biggest. Owens out front. And hits. Anna Owens drills the jumper from the circle. Boy, that's tough to defend if she can get that outside jumper going. We know how good she is at drawing the defense on the interior with the drive. And speaking of the drive, Pujol has been very effective taking the ball to the goal with dribble penetration. Maya Benham assessed with her first personal foul. And we take a look at the team foul situation. Five team fouls on Cincinnati in the quarter. None on the homestanding USF Bulls. And I'm sure that was another factor in... uh, Head coach Jamel Elliott uh, being less than pleased with the officiating. You can't blame her. 5 nothing for the home team. And she figures she, she wants uh, a little bit of representation as far as the team fouls. And now USF is starting to uh, really take advantage of the free throw situation. They're 9 of 12 from the line. So they've gone to the line 12 times. The visiting team's gone to the line twice. And they're going to spend the next six minutes of this quarter in the bonus. So that's going to be a lot of time for USF to get some points at the line. Coaches will always look at the free throw attempt differential. But USF would locks it back in there now. That's her wearing number 33 has owned the defensive glass. Loxa will go all the way. And she's going to be called for a charge. And she can't believe it back on the other sides. But Cincinnati with Johnson now checking back in. And we talked about the outside shooting for USF. How about Cincinnati with a little outside shooting as Anna Owens hitting from the top of the key. That's something she's so good at, and that's going to cause some problems for USF's defense. Loxa picking up the first USF team foul of the quarter. But again... The Bulls just controlling the defensive glass as Flores will run the club. Now for Loxa, as we approach five minutes remaining in this second period. Henshaw now for Flores. Shot clock under 10. Loxa for three. A little bit off, but in the rebound action, we have a foul. It'll go the other way. Yeah, it's a loose ball foul underneath on the rebound. Loxa looks off tonight. She has not been able to hit the outside shot, and we're starting to see a little frustration on her face here going forward here with about about halfway through this second quarter. And we get a whistle, and we get a timeout. Four minutes, 59 seconds remaining in this second quarter. It's USF 28. And Cincinnati 19, you're watching American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball on the American Digital Network. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. For every hero, there is an origin story. An experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling. Offering a different kind of education. One guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. We are American. We are the spark that ignites. Dazzling. Brilliant. Intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, 
on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. The University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. Back here at the Sun Dome on the campus of the University of South Florida in Tampa, Ted Sarandis alongside Jeff Sherrod. It's USF leading Cincinnati 28 to 19, and then Philadelphia, Jeff Yukon continues to just take no prisoners. Six minutes left in the second quarter. It's the Huskies leading the Temple Owls 35 to 11. Too much. It's, you know, it's every week we get the release from the conference and it has the standings table with the winning streak out on the outside on the last column. You usually see, you know, 1 4, lost 2, UConn 195. How many times do you get to see that? It's just, uh, it, it really is something uh, extraordinary. And it's my hope that. Uh, when the Huskies come here in a couple of weeks to Tampa, that there's a huge crowd here at the Sun Dome for that one because you get a chance to see an unbeaten team coming into your building more than likely. And Flores with the quick hands gets the steal. Down court, Pujo lays it up and in. And that was a tough job by Pujo. And now she almost, and she does get the steal off the inbound. How about that? Flores a step back and hits. Flores hits the three. And head coach Jamel Elliott wants to talk it over. Yeah, I don't blame her. Real quick, two baskets off the turnover in between, and you got to stop that momentum before it gets out of hand, down 14. You have to feel for Cincinnati because they have guarded Kitty Alaksa about as well as possible, but defense, these quick hands with the steals back-to-back, have given the Bulls their biggest lead at 14. Yeah, exactly. And you see Pujol, this is the key, is after you score the basket, everyone says, oh, you got to get back. But she got stepped right back in the passing lane and was able to get the steal. And a good job also by Laya Flores coming back after she had the dish in transition. Coming back as the trailer, she gets the open three. Bang, five quick points. And Cincinnati's in a real danger zone now with 4.33 to go in the quarter. And they've guarded Laxa maybe better than anybody in the country has all year. And yet... They're down by 14 points. And as you talked about, Jeff, it's a it's a USF, USF team that does not have one of their top players. A starter in Laura Ferreira is out for the rest of the season. Also, Jazz Bond, a 6'4 freshman guard, is not playing because of back spasms. And the rotation is diminished for USF. They struggled offensively tonight, and yet we talked with uh, Coach Osterman, the lead assistant, before the game. And he said that this program emphasizes defense before everything else. As the foul was on Shanice Johnson, that's her third. But just talk about the uh, tremendous effort defensively on the backboards from USF, despite the fact they've struggled at times on offense. Well, the fact that, you know, we talk a lot about how explosive USF's offense is, as Jesperson gets inside with the scoop layup. The fact is, it's the defense that leads to the offense. We know that they're able to dictate the pace based on that. And Cincinnati just can't catch up right now. Quisenberry, and they turn it over. So we had the illegal screen on the possession before, and now another turnover, and Shanice Johnson's going to come out with three fouls in favor of Chelsea Warren. 9 nothing run for the USF Bulls for their biggest lead at 35-19 as we go under four minutes to play here in this second quarter. Loxa has been held in check. Loxa is just one out of six, and yet her mates have forged a 16-point lead. Here's Loxa here with the jump hook. I had to get something going, but that is certainly not her shot. Trying to create her own shot, which she's actually surprisingly pretty good at. But when you're that far from the basket and you try that little Magic Johnson baby hook, it wasn't going to fall that time. And she's still a little frustrated with herself in terms of the looks that she's getting right now on that end. Almost an incredible steal by Flores and we saw head coach Jose Fernandez tell Loxa, hey we're playing well, 
No need to force anything. Just let the game come to you. And he's right. Jose has done just an excellent job here at USF. And it's really good to see Jamel Elliott in her eighth season have a 14-7 and seven run coming in for Cincinnati. It's a turnover, traveling violation. And Cincinnati coughs it up. USF will get it back. So both coaches having good years. But the USF Bulls are looking for win number 18 tonight, and they're closing in on 20 wins, and they're closing in, I think, Jeff, another trip to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me in the least. And, you know, Jose Fernandez, he knows that his program is on the cusp of real greatness here in the American Athletic Conference. We know about the headlines that UConn is able to make, but USF, as you see Flores chasing down her own offensive rebound, that's the kind of hustle that you like to see. No question, Jose is really building something special here at the University of South Florida. And Coach Pujols. Austin said they expect to win. It is called for the charge, and she felt that she got a little bit of a bump as she penetrated, and now she'll get a rest, and uh, Durant Naj is in. Yeah, sorry about that, Ted, earlier. As you see, you know, Flores runs the show so well and they run a ball screen out front that time, but Pujol that time out of control going to the basket, and that's a turnover. Here's Anna Owens. Now for Chelsea Warren. Warren will take the step back. And it'll be USF ball. Yeah, again for Warren taking that outside shot. Now I know that the numbers right now say she shoots 57% this season but on a limited number of attempts, and you, they, they don't want her taking that outside shot. Cincinnati, 8 of 26 from the floor. USF, 11 of 23. Loxa pulls up. Boy, she's missing short. That tells me she's a little tired right now, possibly. Step back pop. Maya Benham drops. That's the first score for Cincinnati in a while. And it's 35-21, USF, under two minutes to play in the quarter. Jesperson. Henshaw got a hand on it. We have a push-off foul on the interior. We're starting to see that ball screen action for USF. But on the offensive rebound, again, that's the, that's the third time that we've seen the loose ball foul on the offensive rebound for USF. And Cincinnati, like we said, still in this danger zone, down 14 with uh, under now a minute 15 to go here in the half. Henshaw's first personal, fourth on the team. Owens will launch from three and hit it. Mm. Anna Owens connects and it's 35-24 USF with one minute to play here in the second quarter. Jesperson guarded closely there by Kuzenberg. Pulls up and hits. Maria Jesperson, first player in double figures. I make it second player in double figures for the Bulls. Has 11, Pujol with 12. And four of eight, she's getting those attempts with locks of cold today. Owens for Quisenberry. Benham out deep. Jesperson. Lost it, got it back, and the steal there by Quisenberry. Quisenberry hits the transition jumper. Quisenberry with four, five seconds left. Flores will go all the way. No, back out deep. The long jumper is no good at the buzzer, and that is the end of our second quarter. Our score at halftime. It's USF 37 and Cincinnati 26. Ariadna Pujol has 12 points and five rebounds for the Bulls. Maria Jesperson with 11 points. Durant Naj with two points. Leia Flores with three points. Tamara Henshaw, six points, five rebounds. And Kitty Alaksa held it just one out of eight from the floor. Three points and two rebounds. Cincinnati led by Anna Owens with nine points. And Nika Goings has two points. Angel Riser with two. Maya Benham with two. 
Shanice Johnson have five has five points and three rebounds. Quisenberry with four points, and Chelsea Warren has two points for a total of 26 points. Our score at halftime is USF 37 and Cincinnati 26. We're back with our halftime program after this. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. For every hero, there is an origin story, an experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling, offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. Jeff Sharon back with you here at halftime where USF has the lead over Cincinnati with, head, with assistant coach Jeff Osterman, the associate head coach of the USF Bulls. And Coach Osterman, Kitty Aloxa not hitting the shot so far, but her teammates have picked her up in this half. We have. I think she's got to really buy in to keep moving without the ball. I mean, Cincinnati's done a really good job, but I think she can get some looks in transition and definitely get on the offensive glass. Flores has been making some things happen also at the point causing some turnovers in addition to her usual running the offense. She has. I think, you know, she's a point guard team first, and I just think we've got to, we had a chance to knock them out, and they kind of came back on us. All right, good luck in the second half. Thanks. Ted? We are America. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. The University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. We are American. We are the spark that ignites. Dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way because on this court on any given night the energy of five becomes the power of one that's power we are power the american athletic conference championship is right around the corner taking place march 9th through the 12th at the excel center in hartford connecticut as all 11 American teams will compete for the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Tickets are priced as low as $199. Get yours today online by visiting www.excelcenter.com in person at the Excel Center box office or by telephone at 877-522-8499. We look forward to seeing you in March. The 2017 American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship tickets are now on sale for March 3rd through the 7th at Mohegan Sun Arena. Get your tickets today to watch all 11 teams in action fighting for an automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. Tickets start as low as $99 and can be purchased online at mohegansun.com, on Ticketmaster, or by calling 1-800-743-3000. Let the games begin. We'll see you in March.
I'm a homebody. Um, I come from a big family, middle of five. Um, so keeping my relationship with them was important to me when making my decision for college. Um, and Cincinnati fit, and you know, it happened to be close to home, so that was a plus. You know, obviously you always want to improve on the court, but I think my biggest improvement has come in my leadership and my confidence in myself and being able to speak out to my teammates and lead them um, by example and now vocally um, has been something big for me. You know, I take pride in that and hopefully, you know, my teammates see that and, and have confidence in me now. Well, Bianca is our glue. She's our engine. She's the steady force on the floor that every coach wants to have out there. Um, she sets an example in the bar for what her at work ethic, whether it's in practice, whether it's in the weight room, whether it's in the classroom. So I think she's a great mentor and leader, for, especially for the seven guys that we have coming into our program as new members. So it's always good as a coach to have that person you trust and depend on and that you can talk to about anything. Just in sports, have you, as you have goals, um, you have to have that in the classroom. Um, you know what I mean? Whether it's graduating early or having a certain GPA, you've got to have goals and, and expect to exceed those goals. And, and I think that's helped me, you know, bring the sport aspect into the classroom and be successful in both. I don't think our goals have changed. Um, you know, we have goals of being over 500 and top five in our conference. Um, and I think part of that, part of reaching that is getting those new people to adjust. You know, they don't have a choice. You're, you're here now. So you have to adjust to where we're going and, and you got to catch up. Um, and they've done a great job of that, um, working themselves in our system um, and learning our system. And, and, you know, it should be a good year. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. We are American. We are the spark that ignites. Dazzling. Brilliant. Intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. Back here at the Sun Dome on the campus of the University of South Florida in Tampa, it's Ted Sarandos alongside Jeff Sharon. At halftime, it's the USF Bulls with a 37-26 lead over the Cincinnati Bearcats. And, Jeff, USF really did it with defense because despite the fact they scored 37 points, they really did not play at the same level offensively that we are used to seeing them play at. But they did it by dominating the backboards, particularly the defensive rebounding, and they did it on the defensive end. Yeah, exactly. And that's sort of the, that's sort of the secret to USF's play is that their defense leads to the offense. As you take a look at they've held Cincinnati to just 37% from the field. Obviously, the three-point shot not falling, but the rebounding edge for the Bulls, 22 to 15. That's right in line with what they want to do. We talked about how one of the keys for uh, Cincinnati was to be smart with the ball. So far, they have. They're, so they've, only, they've given up nine turnovers. They forced 10 on USF. But so far for the Bulls, they've been hitting the boards, and that's one of the big keys that we thought in this game. And it's sort of, and it's certainly kept them in it, given how poorly Loxa has shot in this game so far. Only one of eight from the floor. And USF led by Ariadna Pujol with 12 points and Maria Jesperson with 11 points. Cincinnati led by Anna Owens with nine points. And we see Cincinnati here. Anna Owens making a play on the interior. And here is Owens dribble penetration again. Yeah, but the problem for Cincinnati has been Shanice Johnson, who is only two of six from the field. Uh, five points and three fouls. You see Anna Owens, how good she's been. Three of eight, like you said, Ted. So far, she's been uh, the key for Cincinnati. On the other hand, for USF, it's been Jesperson and Pujol, who are combined eight of 12 from the field for 23 points in this game. And they have picked up the slack where Kitty Alaksa has not been shooting well. Yeah, it just goes to show you how well this USF team is coached because you take away Kitty Alaksa. And what happens, somebody else is going to beat you. And USF has been able to score with dribble penetration. 
and they have a 37-26 lead at halftime. We're back with more in just a moment. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. We are American. We are the spark that ignites. Dazzling. Brilliant. Intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. For every hero, there is an origin story. An experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling. Offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. The University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. The American Athletic Conference Championship is right around the corner, taking place March 9th through the 12th at the Excel Center in Hartford, Connecticut, as all 11 American teams will compete for the automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. Tickets are priced as low as $199. Get yours today online by visiting www.excelcenter.com in person at the Excel Center box office or by telephone at 877-522-8499. We look forward to seeing you in March. Jeff Sharon is standing by with Cincinnati head coach Jamel Elliott. Jeff? All right, well, Coach Elliott, so far you guys are trailing at the half. Shanice is in a little bit of foul trouble. You've gotten some looks from Anna Owens, but you just don't seem to be ball. What are you guys going to do in the second half? Stop fouling. It's been so far, you know, they're doing a good job on Kitty Aloxa, though. What's going to be the key on that on the defensive end? Well, we want somebody to guard her all the time. We want every one of her shots to be contested. Um, I thought we did a really good job on her defensively, like you mentioned, but we just got to keep them off the free throw line, and we got to find a way to score. I thought we took some really good shots early. They didn't fall down the stretch. We was able to get the ball to the side a little bit. You know, it could have got out of hand there for a second. They were up 16. I thought my guys did a really good job fighting back to cut it to 11 with the ball, so hopefully we can cut it to under double figures to start the half. All right, thank you, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, Ted. Hi, Jeff. It's USF 37 at Cincinnati 26. We're back with second half action in just a moment. We are America. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. We are American. We are the spark that ignites. Dazzling. Brilliant. Intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. Here at the Sun Dome on the campus of the University of South Florida in beautiful Tampa, Florida, it's Ted Sarandis alongside Jeff Sharon as we get set for quarter number three. And at the halftime break, the homestanding USF Bowls 
with a 37-26 lead over the Cincinnati Bearcats. And USF will return their original starting lineup of Maria Jesperson, Kitty Alaksa, Tamara Henshaw up front with Ariadna Pujol and Leo Flores in the backcourt. Cincinnati will go with Brandy Tarver, Chelsea Warren, and Shanice Johnson up front with Anna Owens and Bianca Quisenberry in the backcourt. And Cincinnati possession to start quarter number three. And again, the fans, as they always do at the start of the game in each half, stand and they wait for the home team to score the first points of the period, and then they sit down. Owens, the step back three. It's short, and it'll be USF basketball. So the Bulls have got to be pretty pleased with where they are when uh, one of the best players in the country, Kitty Alaksa, is held to just one out of eight from the floor, and they've got an 11-point lead. Yeah, if you're Coach Elliott for Cincinnati, if I told you that you would have hold, held USF to just three of 11 from beyond the arc, and Kitty Alax is just one of eight overall, you'd be pretty happy at the half, but still they're down 11. Just the versatility of this USF team is impressive. Nice move there by Pujol. Couldn't get it to drop, but she grabs the offensive glass. And this is Jesperson out front as they reset. And Cincinnati keeping them in the half court. This is something they've wanted to work on. Slow the Bulls down. Sorry, Ted. Now Pujol off the glass. Pujol scores off dribble penetration. Has 14 to go with six rebounds and an assist. And that's up over the top of her average on the year of 13 and a half per game. Quisenberry will pull up and hit it at a foul. Score the goal for Bianca Quisenberry. And Pujol can't believe it. And she's getting a warning from the official saying, listen, calm down over there. Let's take a look at this again. As you see, Shanice Johnson, who actually really wasn't too much of a factor in the first half. She got into foul trouble. And Coach Jose Fernandez with a uh, spirited discussion with the sideline official. And here is Bujol. Uh, Henshaw finds Loxa. Was it Barry with the rebound? Sorry, Ted. Now Loxa one for nine from the field. And Owens finds Chelsea Warren. Quisenberry trying to use the screen and does. Owens for three, and it's an air ball. Ooh, it looked like, look like Anna's kind of coming up a little gingerly after that. I don't know if maybe she came down on someone else's foot, but that shot came off way off to the left. Didn't quite get herself underneath her as Pujol's going to come out now for USF. And Durant Naj is in. The, where's number 13? The 6'1 junior from Pex, Hungary. Naj, first player off the bench recently in this uh, narrowed rotation for head coach Jose Fernandez, particularly with Laura Ferreira, the uh, really good 5'11 junior from Lisbon out for the rest of the season. She only played in nine games before suffering a uh, left foot injury, and that has really narrowed the USF rotation. Cincinnati and man. And Jesperson able to draw the foul off dribble penetration. No, she's called for uh, the offensive foul. Thought she was going to get the whistle. She did not. Well, Jesperson has the size, a junior from Denmark. She's averaging 14.3 per game, and she leads the team in rebounds. And on that occasion, turn the ball over. And Cincinnati, if you got to string together a couple baskets here, you can get right back in this game pretty quickly. Still a lot of time left. The lead is just 11 for USF. Owens, now for Benham. Benham yeah. hits the three-pointer. Maya Benham cuts the deficit to 8, 39-31, with a lot of time left. 7.08 to play in the third quarter. That's exactly what Cincinnati wanted to do on that possession. Take the air out of the ball, get a good open look. And now they're cut it down to single digits. The steal by Bianca Quisenberg. Oh, what a move. Anna Owens to the goal. Nice move, couldn't get it to drop. And Tamara Henshaw with the defensive rebound for USF. And that right there is not what Cincinnati wants to do. Locks it for three. 
Jesperson with the follow. Naj with the rebound. And the steal by Brandy Tarver. And this chaos on defense, again, is falling in line with what the Bearcats said they wanted to do to sort of throw USF off their rhythm. Loxon misses another shot. Now let's see if the Bearcats slow it down. Owens. And Henshaw clears for USF down court floor. And that's two straight misses for Owens. Jesperson for three. Follows her own missed shot. Can't get it to drop. Had a foul in the rebound action on Maria Jesperson. Boy, there's a lid on the rim for both squads these last few possessions. We got our first look at Nancy Warioba. Where's number 32? She checks into the ball game for the USF Bulls. And substitutions now for the Cincinnati Bearcats. Sam Rogers returns. Rogers, a 5'9 freshman from Lakota East High School, Cincinnati, Ohio. She missed 10 games with an MCL injury, but she's a rising freshman and they really like to utilize her off the bench and she's in the game as well for Cincinnati Johnson work in the interior can't get it to drop yeah she's outnumbered underneath there no help on the interior for the Cincinnati offense Flores now for Jesperson Jesperson draws a foul Now both teams not shooting particularly well for the game so far. USF at 38%, Cincinnati at 34% from the field. And Owens, 3 of 12 for the Bearcats. We talked about how Loxa hasn't been hitting very well either. 1 for 10. Tarver picks up her second personal foul, and that's the first from the team in the quarter. Cincinnati staying with a tight man. Foul on Bianca Quisenberg. Yeah, that, and that's what happens with Quisenberry out there. She's basically at the one position as Owens is going to get ready to come back in now. And she's going to take over for Quisenberry. Cincinnati's at their most dangerous offensively when they're both out there, though, because Quisenberry's such a good outside shooter. Under five and a half minutes remaining in this third quarter and the lead a tenuous eight for USF. Locks it trying to get on track. Now finds Naj to the goal and USF has missed their last six shots. Locks it again. She hits this one. Locks it hits the three from the left wing and extends the lead back to 11, 42, 31. Locks a her first three, she's one out of seven, and she's just two out of 11 from the floor. She's got six points. Nice high-low action. Cincinnati It'll stay with Cincinnati. And we get a timeout with four minutes and 52 seconds to play here at quarter number three. Our score is USF 42 and Cincinnati 31. You're watching... American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball on the American Digital Network. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. For every hero, there is an origin story, an experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling, offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. The University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run.
We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. Four minutes, 52 seconds remaining in quarter number three. It's USF 42, Cincinnati 31. Ted Sarandis alongside Jeff Sharon. We're at the beautiful Sun Dome on the USF campus in Tampa, Florida. And Jeff, five to five here in quarter number three. USF shooting under 39%, but they're dominating the backboards, out rebounding the visitors 33 to 18, including. 24 to 15 on the defensive glass. Yeah, but the one I'm looking at is the offensive boards, Ted. 9 to 3 advantage for USF there. It's led to an 11 nothing advantage in second chance points in this game. And points in the paint. USF 16, Cincinnati 6. On the interior, score the goal for Sam Rogers. Rogers with her first field goal of the game. In Philadelphia, less than five minutes to play in the third. UConn 65 and Temple 30. Jesperson lays it in. So quick off the dribble. Rodgers had no chance out there on the wing. Deceptive for her size. Angel Riser with the lay-in. And that was a gorgeous play by Owens coming right back with the interior dish. She was shooting the ball a little bit too much in the first five minutes of the quarter, Ted. She's got to set up her teammates if Cincinnati wants to get back in it. Flores with the shot clock at 20. Now Loxa looking to get on track. Fires from deep and forced that one, but Naj gets the rebound. And we get a whistle on the interior. Loxa was way off on that, and she right in front of us, she kind of dipped her head a little bit. Like, I can't believe I missed that shot by that much. She has just been off, and it's been a credit to her teammates, but that has enabled Cincinnati to stick around. They're only down nine with 3.56 left here in the third. The whistle was to reset reset the shot clock to 14 seconds. Right, it was an air ball, so, and now it's back down to 13. 3.56 remaining in the third quarter. Shot clock at 13. Flores having trouble, finally gets it in. It's knocked away. It'll be USF possession with 12 seconds of the shot clock. And Cincinnati really defending the baseline out of bounds. That's part of what they've wanted to do to throw USF off is just cause havoc in the passing lanes. Naj will inbound for Flores. Brings it back out deep. Loxa with the shot clock at six. Jesperson with the offensive rebound. Ten offensive boards for the Bulls in this game. Flores will take some time and pull up and hit the jumper. So Flores was going to back it out, but then she saw the opening, and she hit the jumper. She's got five points, seven assists, and three rebounds, playing a very effective floor game, and USF leads by 11. Yeah, she knows how to fill up the stat sheet. I think the shooting part of her game is something that's underappreciated, but she knows when to take the open shot. Johnson the step back. The Esperson clears the defensive glass for Flores. Quick hitter, nice. Oh. Blocked there by Shanice Johnson, but a foul. Well, you saw how quickly USF can get down, and what I'm really impressed with Coach Fernandez's team is how the bigs run the floor. Yes, for Sinaj, we saw Warioba running the floor. And a good job by Shanice Johnson of getting back, but she got her with the body, and that's going to be two shots. Bottom line is she was out of position because she got beat down the floor. And Shanice Johnson picking up another foul. That's four personal fouls on Shanice Johnson, and she's going to come out. And now we're going to have a, a line change almost for Cincinnati with three substitutions. Quisenberry's back in there, Goings, and Maya Benham as well. Nige could exit the line. Has four points, and it's a 13-point USF lead. Bianca Quisenberry with the ball for Cincinnati. Now for Benham. This is Owens, and she draws a reach-in foul on Leia Flores. 
When we talk about how USF, they're actually second in the nation in fewest fouls per game. But if Cincinnati can get physical with some of that ball screen action, it might be able to draw that, draw that out of USF a little bit more. Playa Flores, first personal, fourth on the team, with under three minutes to play in the third. Cincinnati possession, trailing 48-35. Quisenberry. No shot. Draws a foul off penetration. Cincinnati's been able to get some success when they have taken the ball to the basket. Nancy Warioba assessed with the personal foul. And that's going to put Riser on the line. She's 61% from the line this year. Makes that one. First personal on Wario, but fifth on the team with 237. Remaining in quarter number three. Angel Riser, the six foot freshman forward from East Wake High School, Zebulon, North Carolina. Connects on a pair. 48 36, USF by 12. Flores. Now for Henshaw. Thought about it, but she's not an outside shooter. She plays the five spot. Jesperson the step back and hits. Maria Jesperson has 15 points and nine rebounds as she's closing in on a double-double. And a quick release on that step back, too. Wasn't that nice? You think she's going to the basket like she has been the whole game, and then she steps back and pops that little J. Beautiful. Quisenberry shut off. Maya Benham will take the three. Nancy Warioba grabs the rebound. Jesperson for three. And wow. hits. Maria Jesperson has 18. And USF back to a 53-36 advantage. What can you do when Lox is 2 of 13, but Jesperson's hitting shots all over the place, and Pujol as well. A combined now 12 of 20 for 32 points. Those two players for the Bulls. Foul away from the play on Cincinnati. As an illegal screen. And now Cincinnati's in a real danger zone with a minute 28 to go in this quarter. As we may see USF start to heat up a little bit from the outside. You're down 17. You got to make something happen on defense. Maya Benham, second personal, fourth on the team as we approach one minute to play here in quarter number three. Jesperson drives to the goal. Her runner is good. Maria Jesperson has 20 points. And Cincinnati wants a timeout. One minute, six seconds left to play in quarter number three. USF extends to their biggest lead at 19. And they're closing in on win number 18. And forgive me, Ted, but... We talked about how good Jesperson has been in this game, picking up for Kitty Aloxa. We look at the shooting percentages for both squads. USF now up over 40% at 44%. Both teams are kind of even at this point. But right now they are in very good shape. All right, let's take a look at the American Athletic Conference honor roll. And the freshman of the week, Chuck Dixon. A guard from Tulsa. The player of the week is Colby Morgan, a very athletic guard from Tulane. And on the weekly honor roll, Bray Elmore, talented guard from Memphis. And Fayonda Fitzgerald, a very good player in the backcourt for the Temple Owls. Gabby Williams, the outstanding forward for the University of Connecticut, made the American Athletic conference honor roll this week and Zakira Lewis a guard from UCF Kitty Alaksa the forward from UCF the last member of this week's group named to the American Athletic Conference honor roll here in 2017 the conference media relations office puts that out every week and we take a look at the in-game statistics, USF has outscored Cincinnati 18-10 to here in quarter number three to take their biggest lead at 55-36. 
And second chance points right now, Ted, 13 to two. And we've started to see instead of Kitty Aloxa sort of taking over the game, it has been Maria Jesperson with 20 points, six shy of her career high, which was set against Memphis. She also did that against Stetson, two 26 point games. Benham can't get the top of the key jumper to drop. Owens will bring it back up. Chelsea Warren trying to set a screen. Owens. Quisenberry drives. Good ball movement. The step back pop is good. Nakira Goings hits the jumper. Goings came in averaging six points a game this year. 32% from beyond the arc. Cincinnati hopes that can be a spark here down 16. Laxa with 18 of the shot clock. Now yes, Percy. Step back jumper. Goings grabs the rebound, eight seconds left. Down court Owens, four seconds left. Out deep going. And that's the end of quarter number three. Our score at the end of three quarters is USF 55 and Cincinnati 39. We're back with quarter number four after this. You're watching American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball on the American Digital Network. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. We are American. We are the spark that ignites. Dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. For every hero, there is an origin story, an experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling, offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. The University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. End of three quarters. USF 55, Cincinnati 39. Ted Sarandis alongside Jeff Sharon at the Sun Dome on the campus of the University of South Florida in Tampa, Florida. End of three quarters in Philadelphia. UConn 74 and Temple 47. And here tonight, Jeff, it's a case where defense, again, the USF Bulls' ability to play defense, move their feet without fouling, has been the difference. They've held Cincinnati to 16 to 46 shooting under 35%. I know they're not at the offensive point of the game that head coach Fernandez would like, but they've played an outstanding defensive game. Yeah, and credit to them. You know, for the entire season, their field goal percentage has been great. Third, uh, third in the league in terms of field goal percentage defense, allowing just 36%. In this game, Cincinnati shooting, like you said, Ted, under 35. And the rebounding, the Bulls are nearly doubling up Cincinnati through three quarters, 39 to 20, the advantage in rebounds. Jesperson hits the step back. She's got 22, and the lead is 57 39. And for Cincinnati, they've got to at least take some solace that they've held Kitty Aloxa to 2 of 13 for the floor. 
Working the interior is Brandy Tarver. Make it Chelsea Warren. Chelsea Warren able to score on the interior. Warren, a sophomore from Red Oak, Texas. And Loxa drains the three. So Loxa's second three, she's got nine. And the lead is 60 to 41. She had a look on her face like it's about time that this finally went down for me. She hit one earlier, but it just hasn't been her night. But she got that one. Owens. Now for Quisenberry. This is Maya Benham. A long jumper won't go for Nakira Goings. And the deep rebound, USF ball, and good hustle. Goings get back into the play and knocked it out of bounds. Shanice Johnson going to check back in. And here's a look at Kitty Aloxa. This is what we thought we would see a lot of that very quick release. Steph Curry-esque from the corner. She can release it without her shoulders necessarily turned toward the basket. We've seen that many times. That time she got her feet underneath her and was able to hit from the corner to give USF, or rather extend this USF lead out to 19. Pujol for Laksa with the shot clock at 12. Trying to use a Wario, but ball screen, nothing there. Flores with the shot clock at 6. Now Jesperson just barely got it off, and it skimmed the front of the iron. It did hit the front of the iron. Yeah. They're going to have to look at the replay. It was close, but it skimmed the front of the iron. And we have one of the officials over there saying reset the shot clock. That's Angela Lewis. <laughs> Saying I saw it clip the rim. And it looks like they are going to take a peek at it. Let's see if we can uh, take a look at that as well with USF leading 60 to 41. And they're calling a held ball. Right. I think what happened was they, because it was inconclusive that it was a loose ball, they decided just to go to the possession arrow. And Cincinnati gets the basketball. Should have gone to the replay in that yeah. situation, but Cincinnati possession. Good dish. Warren on the inside draws a blocking foul. Well, there you see something that Shanice Johnson, we thought we would see more, but she's been in such foul trouble in this game that we haven't seen how good she could be with the basketball for a big player, able to draw the defense. She's an excellent passer. That's so underrated, and there she sets up couple opportunities at the free throw line for her teammate Chelsea Warren. Leia Flores assessed with the personal foul and Warren connects at the line. Warren the 5'10 sophomore from Red Oak Texas. Not a great free throw shooter just over 51 percent. Averages five points starts at that power forward spot and nearly five rebounds but she connects there. And it's 60 to 43 USF. Warren Look at has six points. Look at the passing. Warioba. Nice job on the offensive glass. And that wasn't easy, wrestling the basketball away from three Cincinnati players underneath. Flores shot clock at five. Reverse lay-in. Shanice Johnson grabs the rebound. Ill-advised. Down court Quisenberry. Jesperson clears the rebound. Loxa. Now for Pujol. Good ball movement, USF. Warioba the jump hook. Jesperson with the rebound. Oh, that's beautiful. The Warioba score the goal. Gorgeous interior passing. First field goal for Warioba has two. And Chelsea Warren missed a bunny, and here comes USF. Jesperson the step back and hits. Jesperson has 24 points and 11 rebounds and Cincinnati wants a timeout. Our score is USF 64 at Cincinnati 43. We're back with more in just a moment on the American Digital Network. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. 
Because that's power. We are power. American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship tickets are now on sale for March 3rd through the 7th at Mohegan Sun Arena. Get your tickets today to watch all 11 teams in action fighting for an automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. Tickets start as low as $99 and can be purchased online at mohegansun.com, on Ticketmaster, or by calling 1-800-743-3000. Let the games begin. We'll see you in March. For every hero, there is an origin story, an experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling, offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. The University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. It's USF 64 at Cincinnati 43 with 6.15 to play in quarter number four. It's had Sarandis alongside Jeff Sharon. And Jeff rebounding a big, big factor in this game. We just saw Nancy Warioba able to connect with her lone field goal off an offensive rebound. USF out rebounding the visitors 45 23 including 14 to 5 on the offensive glass. Not a surprise for a team that's 15th in the nation in rebounds per game. We talked about the offensive glass that was particularly important on that last clip. 14 to five advantage for USF. That's led to 17 second chance points for the Bulls compared to seven for Cincinnati. Owens. Looking for Shanice Johnson. And I don't think Shanice Johnson has been the same player since she suffered that fall in the first half. And she's also been in foul trouble for much of this game, too. Tetris has never been able to get going. Pujo, the long three. Johnson clears the rebound. USF has held the visitors to 43 points. And USF holding opponents to just over 58 points on the season. But this has been a stellar defensive performance from the USF Bulls. And consider that Cincinnati comes in fifth in the American in uh, scoring offense, averaging 65 points per game. Like you said, Ted, held to 43 at this point in the game. Sam Rogers back in the game. Where's number 11? Replacing Anna Owens. Jesperson still out there, along with Flores. Kitty Aloxa. Now, I, I bet you they're trying to get Jesperson to tie her career high of 26. She has 24 in this game right now on 10 of 19 from the field. And she also has her eighth double double of the season with 12 rebounds. Quisenberry out deep. Under five minutes to play in the game. Denise Johnson, bounce speed, nice play. Score the goal for Brandy Tarver. Gorgeous assist right there, too, by Shanice. Second on the team in assists. We talked about how she stuffs the stat sheet for Cincinnati, and that's one of the things she can do as a big is pass up top. First field goal for Tarver, two points. Jesperson trapped now for Loxa. Finds Henshaw for Jesperson in the lane. Steal, Quisenberry. Good job to get back into the play defensively by Flores and Pujo. And they knew on that last possession they were trying to get it to Jesperson. She fumbled it in the lane, and that cut, sort of threw off the entire play that they were trying to run for her. Quisenberry looking to get it in. Johnson to the goal. Tamara Henshaw clears the defensive board. 
They've been very physical with Johnson down low when she's been trying to get underneath. Locks it for three. Akira Goings down court Quisenberry. Loxa grabs the defensive glass. Back and forth we go. USF has played this game to their tempo. Nice pass. And Maria Jesperson has tied her career high, has 26. And she's done that before in two games this season, January 17th against Memphis and December 30th against Stetson. So this is her third time with 26 points this season. Randy Tarver. Able to connect on the interior. Has four points. 66-47 USF. Under three and a half to play in quarter number four. Locks up for Henshaw. They're trying to run a screen out top. Cincinnati has stayed man for man. And we have a foul away from the play. And that was... Looked like it was Goings out top. First personal, first on the team. Tamara headshot of the bench, and Nancy Warioba returns to play the five spot for USF. Sorry, Ted Goings was blocking her on the screen out top that they were trying to run on that last play. We get our first look at Tanisha Coleman, wears number 32, 5'10 freshman. Marshall High School, Chicago, Illinois, averages 2.1 points. Pujol will bring it back out. Dangerous, to close to a three seconds in there. Pujol still with it, shot clock at 12. Pujol draws the second team foul on Cincinnati. 252 remain in the game. Owens is still out there for Cincinnati, but the rest are all bench players. Coleman first personal foul against second on the team. 252 to play in the game. USF in control, leading 66-47. Warioba in the lane. Back for Pujol. USF starter still out there except for Warioba. Pujol, now Jesperson, the step back is around, halfway down, drops out, a whistle to the foul. Boy, not sure how that thing didn't fall for Jesperson. That would have been her career high right there, rolling off the rim. Third personal on Brandy Tarver, third of the team with 30 seconds. A fresh 30 on the shot clock. USF possession. Loxa. Pulls up. Top block. Jesperson got a hand on it. Battled for it. And it looks like Anna Owens dribbled it on the line and it's going to go back to USF. Janice Johnson back in for Cincinnati, replacing Maya Benham. Sorry, Ted, but that was a really good defensive possession for Cincinnati. Kind of a microcosm of their night tonight. Pujol. Looking for a screen and gets one. Now Jesperson the step back. Shanice Johnson with the rebound. Owens. For Shanice Johnson. Long three. Rebound Leia Flores. Well, what a performance for USF. Looks like they're going to get to 18-3 and three overall on the year. Loxa hits a runner in the lane. She's in double figures. So the Bulls with three players in double figures. And Cincinnati does not have a player in double figures. Anna Owens at nine points. Loxa has 11 with five rebounds. But Loxa having a tough shooting night, just four of 18. But Jesperson, 26 points and 12 rebounds. And Pujol with 14 points and nine rebounds. Cincinnati you said it, Ted. With Cincinnati, no players in double figures in this game. 19 of 60 from the field. The USF defense tonight has been suffocating. 31.7%. You hold a team under 32%, you're going to win just about every time. Owen, short jumper. Nancy Warioba, the defensive board. 
Ariadna Pujol will bring it up. We approach one minute to play in the game. Bulls closing in on win number 18. Getting closer to that 20 win mark. Pujol now working on underneath. For Warioba, the jump hook is good. Nancy Warioba hits the jump hook. Four points for Warioba off the bench. And you're seeing something interesting, I think, what Coach Fernandez is doing in these final moments, keeping his starters out there except for Warioba. He's putting, seeing what your, what Warioba can do with the other four starters to see if maybe this is a lineup he might use a little bit later on in the season when he needs some size. Johnson drills the three from out deep. Johnson, just three of 11 from the floor. She's got eight points. So USF has done the job on her defensively. We're under 30 seconds to play in the game. USF will have to shoot because there's about a two-second differential shot clock and game clock. Loxa lost it, got it back. Underneath now, Warioba gets free and lays it in. That's six points for Warioba. Ties her career high. Seven seconds left. Owens hits. And that's double figures for Cincinnati. First time all night that someone that a Bearcats reached double figures. Flores will count it down. Two, one. Horn sound. This game's over. And the USF Bulls have defeated Cincinnati by a score of 72 to 52. USF improves to 18 and 3 overall, 9 and 1 at home, 7 and 1 in the conference. Cincinnati drops to 14 and 8 overall, 5 and 4 in conference play. Force of will for USF tonight as, like we said, Kitty Aloxa did not have a good shooting night. Four of 18, but her teammates picked her up as Jesperson finishes, tying her career high with 26 points and a double-double to go with 12 rebounds, 11 of 22 from the field. What a performance by USF, particularly defensively. Final score, USF 72 and Cincinnati 52. We're back with our post-game program in just a moment. You want uh, a player first, Drew? Or... We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. We are American. We are the spark that ignites. Dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. Final score, USF 72 and Cincinnati 52. Ted Sarandis alongside Jeff Sharon. We're here at the Sun Dome with the star of the game, Maria Jesperson. Ties her career high with 26 points, 12 rebounds, had a block, and two assists. Maria, congratulations on a terrific all-around game. Thank you. Give me your thoughts on it. Um, I think we had a tough first quarter, the first half. Like, we had way too many turnovers, myself included. Uh, I think we took a little bit better care of the ball in the second half and played better defense. You know, Maria, you tied your career high with 26. Again, this is the third time you've had that many. And you had to because Kidia was not shooting well in this game. We thought that if she wasn't shooting well, you guys would have to pick her up, and that's exactly what you did. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, it's a team sport, so even though that Kidia is not shooting her best game, um, we, we, it's a team, so we just have to pick up for her and like, and make plays and make shots. And, and she kept her head high and, and did other things, so that was good. Maria, thoughts on 18 wins now before we let you go. The team is closing in on that magic 20-win uh, mark and looking to win as many as you can and get back to the NCAA tournament. Yes, that's the goal for sure. Um, it's been the goal all season. Going to the NCAA tournament, get as many wins as possible. Uh, we, have a, we have a possibility to uh, tie the best record or break the best record ever here at USF, and, and that's the goal too. 
Thanks a lot for joining us. Congratulations. You're welcome. Thank Maria you. Jesperson had a terrific game, ties a career high with 26 points. We're going to bring in uh, head coach uh, Fernandez in just a moment, but we'll take a break and we'll be back with more after this. Stay with us. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. Okay, we're back here at USF final score, USF 72 at Cincinnati 52. Ted Sarandis, Jeff Sharon with head coach Jose Fernandez. Coach, I know you weren't happy with the offensive effort, but we know that defense is the staple of this program, and you've got to be really pleased with the defensive effort tonight. Yeah, that's what we talked about. Well, in the first half, we shoot 44%. Uh, we turn it over 10 times, you know, and you're up 11. Uh, in that third quarter, you know, that's one thing we talk about is not fouling. And, they, uh, you know, we averaged 11, 12 fouls a game. In that third quarter, we committed five or six of those. So I wasn't pleased with that. I, I was happy we did a great job on the glass. That, that, was, that was big for us. But, uh, you know, proud of our kids. I thought we really assaulted the glass on the offensive end. Um, There's three straight games where they, we've really committed and got better after that Louisville game. Maria Jesperson picked up. Big time for Kidia uh, today. You know, Kidia did not shoot the ball well, 4 of 18. But Maria, 11 of 22 from the field, ties her career high, 26 points. And she was showing off just the amazing ability that she has inside and outside. How much better has she improved? Well, it starts with her versatility. You know, there, there's going to be nights where, you know, Kit doesn't shoot the ball well. You know, and right now we're just so thin, guys. You know, the injury deal, uh, we've dealt with it all year. But Dory Naj giving us some minutes, and Tamara Henshaw with everything that she's going through. I thought Nancy Warrioba came in and gave us some really, really good minutes. But I thought Ariana Pujol really attacked the basket, and so did Maria early. And that's what we need, we wanted to do. We wanted to attack Johnson and get her into foul trouble. You know, and she had three fouls in the first half. Coach, let's take a look at the final statistics. And, uh, again, I know you, you, you certainly uh, want to do better offensively, but I look at that rebounding total. 53 to 30 that's the story of the game including 16 to 7 on the offensive glass that's got to make you feel awfully good yeah there were two things we talked about how how we were going to rebound and how we were going to take care of it we went from turning it over 10 times in the first half to turning it over four lastly you're closing in on the magic 21 mark you're closing in on an opportunity to return to the ncaa tournament give me your overall thoughts a lot of games left got eight games left (laughs) go on a swing trip this was a time of the year where I go, okay, we got Louisville at home in our non-conference game, and then we got four of five on the road. I go, this was going to determine how we end up. So this swing trip is big because we return home with three, three, uh, three home games. So uh, we got to rest up, get healthy for, uh, for a very good Memphis team, and, and, and East Carolina, Greenville is one of the toughest places to play in the league. So uh, get back to work on Friday. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks for coming guys. by to join us. Well done, right. Coach. Thank you. Head Coach Jose Fernandez, final score, USF 72 at Cincinnati 52. Next game on the American Digital Network is Saturday, February 4th at 3 p.m. It's UCF at SMU. Thanks to producer-director Drew Vincent, the executive producer Scott Reeling, and the entire crew for a great job tonight. So for Jeff Sharon, this is Ted Sarandis saying so long from the Sun Dome in Tampa, Florida. The final score once again, USF 72, Cincinnati 52. Have a great night, everybody.
unbeaten team coming into your building more than likely. And Flores with the quick hands gets the steal. Down court, Pujo lays it up and in. Pulls up and hits. Maria Jesperson. Pulls up and hits. there by Kuzenberg. Pulls up and hits. Maria Jesperson. First player in double figures. I make there it by Kuzenberg. Pulls up and hits. Maria Jesperson. First player. Jesperson for three. Jesperson for three. And wow. hits. Maria Jesperson has eight.
Apujo in the lane and hits. Gorgeous dream shake that time. Put them to the goal. This is Johnson for three. And hit. Now we just talked about that, right? 40 Johnson, but when you can switch out Warren for Riser, you're not losing much. Henshaw. Dan Quisenberry from the mid 1980s. Jesperson the other way hits from three. Maria Jesperson bang. City Royals closer Dan Quisenberry from the mid 1980s. Jesperson. Porter with. On the interior. On Cordano Owen. Nice speed on the interior. Gorgeous. Score it. Angel Riser. On Cordano Owen. High speed on the interior. Gorgeous. Score it. Angel Rizor with the lay. Guarded there closely by Benham. Pujol off the glass gets the roll. Guys, where's 13? Not Pujol. Guarded there closely by Benham. Pujol off the glass gets the roll. Gorgeous take by Ariadna Pujol. The senior from Spain. Shooting 46% on the year. An unbeaten team coming into your building more than likely. And Flores with the quick hands gets the steal. Down court, Pujo lays it up and in. And that was a tough job by Pujo. And now she team coming into your building more than likely. And Flores with the quick hands gets the steal. Down court, Pujo lays it up and in. And that was a tough job by Pujo. And now she almost, and she does get the steal off the inbound. How about that? Flores a step back. And hits. Flores hits the three, and head coach Jamel Elliott wants to talk it over. A nine-point lead for USF is their biggest. Owens out front, and hits. Anna Owens. Tired right now, possibly. Step back, Pop Maya Benham drops. That's the first score there by Quisenberry. Pulls up, and hits. Maria Jesperson, first player in double figures. I make it there by Quisenberry. Pulls up and hits. Maria Jesperson, first player in double figures. I make it second player in double figures. Owens, now for Benham. Benham hits the three-pointer. I have Benham points in the paint. USF 16, Cincinnati 6. On the interior, score the goal for Sam Rogers. Flores will take some time and pull up and hit the jumper. So Flores is going to back it out, but then she's. Flores will take some time and pull up and hit the jumper. So Flores is going to back it out, but then she saw the opening. Esperson clears the defensive glass for Flores. Quick hitter, Nas. Oh. Esperson clears the defensive glass for Flores. Quick hitter, Nas. Oh. Blocked there by Shanice Johnson. Plays the five spot. Jesperson the step back and hits. Maria Jesperson has 50. Jesperson for three. And wow. hits. Maria Jesperson has 18, and USF back to a 53-36. Jesperson for three, and wow. hits. Maria Jesperson has 18, and USF back to a 53. Jesperson drives to the goal. Her runner is good. Maria Jesperson has 20 points. Quisenberry drives. Good ball movement. The step back pop is good. Nikira Goings hits the jumper. Cincinnati through three quarters, 39 to 20, the advantage in rebounds. Jesperson hits the step back. Warren, a sophomore from Red Oak, Texas. And Laxa drains the three. Now for Pujol. Good ball movement, USF. Warrioba the jump hook. Jesperson with the rebound. Oh, that's beautiful. The Warrioba score the goal. Gorgeous interior passing. Loxa grabs the defensive glass. Back and forth we go. USF has played this game to their tempo. Nice pass. And Maria Jesperson has tied her career. Like they're going to get to 18-3 and three overall on the year. Loxa hits a runner in the lane. She's in double figures. Pujol now working on underneath. For Warioba, the jump hook is good. Nancy Warioba. Loxa lost it, got it back. 
Underneath now, Warioba gets free and lays it in. That's six.